I worked as a flight attendant for a few years when I decided to take an extended sabbatical from college. There were a handful of let's not meet situations I encountered, but one in particular still makes my skin crawl more than any other. I was born and raised in Texas, but I had moved to New York when I was 21, so when I found out at the beginning of a week-long trip that I'd have a couple of overnights in Austin, I was super excited to go to my home state for a few days. My brother lived just north of the city, and we planned to hang out and go to dinner the night when he got off work, and the following day, we were going to meet up with our dad, who lived about an hour away. So I get to the hotel downtown, the crew and I check in, and then we each head off to our rooms. Short elevator ride, and I get to mine. We're not even five minutes later, there's a loud, hard knock on the door. It was only around 1 or 2 p.m., and I hadn't called either my dad or brother to let them know that I was in town yet, so they wouldn't know what room. I assumed it was maybe one of my crewmates, so I headed to the door. Before even making it to the door, however, a loud male voice on the other side boomed. The front desk sent me about the bathroom problem you called in. Before trying to open the door. Unlock the door and open up, miss. I need in. Now. I froze in my tracks. I hadn't even been in the bathroom yet let alone call anything to the front desk. I'm a petite chick, and while I take no shit from anyone despite my size, I still err on the side of caution. Slowly inching towards the door to look out of the peephole, all I could tell was that this man on the other side was at least six feet tall and easily over double my weight. No way in hell was I going to unlock the door. I responded to the guy, telling him he must have the wrong room. He continued pounding on the door while constantly turning the handle, telling me no, he needed in and was getting in the room one way or another. I panicked, but thankfully had the sense to grab the phone and call the front desk. The concierge confirmed that they had neither sent anyone up to my room nor had they received a call about the bathroom. The entire time, this fucking guy was still determined to get into my room, pounding and yelling. Lucky for me, the front desk had dispatched security to my floor. When the security officers step off the elevator a few seconds later, I can hear them in the hall approach and ask the guy who he was, what he was doing, and telling him that he needed to leave the hotel. He immediately gets hostile and aggressive towards them, and the front desk clerk I'm still on the phone with tells me the police have been called and are on their way. In the meantime, I'm trapped in my room, scared shitless. Long story short, the cops show up pretty quickly and manage to arrest the guy for trespassing and criminal menacing or some shit. I later found out that the guy was also wanted in connection to a string of break-ins and violent SAs in Austin. He had seen and stalked me from the minute I entered the hotel lobby. Apparently, I was exactly his type of victim. Nothing else happened after that, but it still rattled the fuck out of me for the rest of my stay in that hotel. I want to preface this story by stating that I've had my fair share of encounters with creepy men. This situation, however, scared the life out of me. It's the first time that I genuinely felt like my life was in danger. My husband and I had to drive 17 hours last week to North Carolina for a wedding. It was an exhausting week, and we basically spent the entire time rushing from one family gathering to another. We were staying in a motel for the time that we were there. We had already been at this motel for a few days by the time the day of the actual wedding rolled around. The day of the wedding was hectic, 
We were rushing around, trying to get ready to leave for the venue. My husband got ready before me so he could do some last minute things before we had to leave. That left me alone in our hotel room to get ready before he returned. It was brutally hot outside and I decided to do my hair and makeup in just my underwear so I wouldn't be sweating in my nice dress the whole time. The way this motel was laid out, the sink and mirror were in the general open area of the room with the toilet and shower in the other room. So anyone walking by our room window could see me standing at the mirror. However, I did have the curtains closed, but these curtains were a little bit sheer, so you could technically see the shadow of someone walking by on the outside, or could maybe see the silhouette of me inside the room. I was curling my hair in the mirror when I noticed the silhouette of a man walking by my room window. As he's passing my window, I see him stop and try to look into my window. At first, I thought it was my husband, trying to see if I was ready, so I paid no mind to it, but the longer the guy stood there, bobbing his head around, trying to get a better look through the curtains, I began to realize it was not my husband, because obviously, why wouldn't he just come in? Now I'm starting to get a little freaked out. Before I could do anything though, I watch as this guy starts to go for my room door. My utter shock and horror came when he actually was able to open the door and walked inside. Before my husband left, he forgot to pull the door shut all the way until it clicked into its lock. He was very upset at himself when I told him this later. So now, I am face to face with this man, and I'm in my underwear no less, who's at least six feet tall and standing in my room. I thought to myself, this is it, he's going to attack you. That's a very scary realization to have. I also thought to myself, you're going to have to burn his eye sockets out with this curling iron if you want to survive. For a few seconds, probably only a second or two, but it felt a lot longer, he just stood there, staring at me, like I was a piece of meat, and he was starving, ready to pounce on me like prey. He then began to smile the most evil-looking, toothy grin I've ever seen, and started mumbling something under his breath. I couldn't make out what he was saying completely, but I did make out the words pretty lady and come here. I don't know if it was the fight or flight response, but I suddenly got pissed and I charged towards him, ready to strike him with my hot curling iron. I screamed as loud as I could, get the fuck out of here. It must have startled him because he jumped back out into the balcony of the motel. I saw this as my chance and I ran for the door. I luckily was able to get to the door and slam it shut right before he was about to make his second attempt at entering inside. I immediately collapsed on the floor, sobbing. I literally was too scared to move from that spot until my husband came back about 15 minutes later. I told him the whole thing and he was freaked out. He initially wanted to find the guy so he could beat the shit out of him, but I refused to let him leave my side. He must have apologized a thousand times during the rest of our trip for not making sure that the door was locked before leaving, but I told him that the day and the whole trip really was so rushed that I could see how it happened. We went to the motel management and told them the whole story. The police were obviously called, and I gave them a description of the guy so that they could see if it was someone who was staying in the motel. After going around to the few motel occupants, they said no one matched his description and concluded that he wasn't staying there. Obviously, we were late to the wedding that day, and the whole experience just ruined what should have been a happy time. We planned on staying another day before our long drive home but we both just wanted out of there as soon as possible. We skipped most of the reception, went back to the motel, 
packed up, and left. I'm usually always so vigilant with locking my doors, especially when I'm home alone. Just goes to show you, all it takes is that one time you forget to check your locks and that certain unwanted guest is inviting themselves in. This happened during the summer of 2002, while I was on a family trip to Las Vegas. My 11 at the time of this story, family and I, went on a family vacation to Las Vegas. There were a bunch of us since we had family visiting from out of the country. After hitting the swimming pool, my family wanted to go to another hotel to go shopping. My grandma, no, she had just immigrated from the Philippines a few years before and knew very limited English, and I decided to go back up to our hotel room because she was tired and I wanted to change before meeting back up with the rest of our family later on for lunch. We got into the elevator, and as it was closing, an older gentleman, maybe in his early to mid-fifties, asked to hold the door. I remember my mom telling me not to let any strangers know where our room was, so before I got in, I pressed two more floors, and thank God I did. He got in and started making small talk. He looked at my shirt. I was wearing a Beach Babe contest tank top from Limited 2 and said, Where's the Beach Babe contest? I'd like to be the judge and make sure you win. My grandma and I smiled at each other and laughed. Then he asked what room we were staying in. I told him that we were visiting a family member's room. He then asked if we were staying at the hotel and if he could escort us back to our room. I told him no. His face at some point turned cold, whereas before, he appeared friendly. He began to insist that he walk us back to our room. At that point, I began panicking and just fell silent. My grandma stared at me, and after what felt like an eternity, his smile came back and then said, Come on, I'm just being nice. Right, Grandma? I remember my stomach sinking until finally the elevator door opened and a couple walked in. I don't know what in me told me to trust them, but I blurted out, I don't know this man, but he's forcing me to let him walk me to my hotel room, and I'm scared. The man then laughed and told them I was his niece. I kept my composure as best I could but I just remember starting to cry, and I couldn't stop crying. My grandma was confused because she didn't really know what was going on. The couple told us to get off the elevator so that I could call my parents, and they walked me and my grandma down to the hotel lobby to the reception desk. I still get chills thinking about what may have happened that day. <laughs> 